So a few years ago, I stumbled upon a little gem, a treasure trove of opportunities for the independent musician. An underground grotto that few find, but those that do plunder. I discovered the musical world of sync licensing. But what is sync licensing? Well, to put simply, it's a music industry term that means put a nice song on that scene and is an oasis for the independent musician as most TV shows, films and adverts only have the budget for one Coldplay or Mumford and Son track. And the rest can be spent on cheap, unknown, desperate wannabes that possess songs that sound a bit Mumfordy. Enter moi. Now I'm doing it a bit of a disservice there because sync licensing or sometimes referred to as music licensing is definitely not an industry for desperate wannabes that can't make it as an artist. In fact, many artists owe their careers to the breakthrough opportunities and financial opportunities that sync licensing brings. And conversely, many music producers who have no interest in being artists make a decent living from licensing their music. So in today's video, let's have a brief look into what music licensing is, how it works, and what is the opportunity for us music creators. So what is music licensing? Sometimes referred to as sync licensing. Now, sync is short for synchronization. And it's essentially when someone says, we need a nice song to play over that scene in our movie or TV show. Sync licensing is when a piece of music is synchronized with a visual medium, when music is placed over a visual piece of footage. Now this can be anything from a YouTube video right through to a Hollywood movie and everything in between. Think TV shows, box sets that you watch on Netflix, Disney Plus, etc. TV adverts or even radio adverts and video games. In its simplest terms, music licensing is when a film creator pays for a license or permission to use a song in their project. You see, film directors can't just use any old song they like. If they're working on a film or a project that will probably earn them some sort of money, they must pay a license to be able to use a song for commercial gain. So to illustrate this a little more, let's go back to perhaps the easiest or purest of analogy. Uh, let's say it's your Aunt Gwen's wedding and she has asked you to do some filming to capture her special day on one of those old camcorders with the little flip out screen. You go to Aunt Gwen's wedding, you film the entire day and you bring it back upload the footage onto your laptop and you have a little dabble in movie creation. You come up with an edit that you like the look of and just to finish it off, just to finish off the beauty of your latest footage uh, for your Aunt Gwen's wedding, you decide the perfect song to go on your Aunt Gwen's wedding video would be Adele's version of Make You Feel My Love. So with a little bit of editing, you've now got your Aunt Gwen's wedding video with Adele's Make You Feel My Love ready. You burn it to DVD because we're old school and you hand it to your Aunt Gwen and she absolutely loves it. Now, technically, you did not ask Adele or her publishing company for permission to use the song. So you are breaking music law to some extent, but Adele's never going to know, no one's really going to care, and I think even if Adele did find out, she'd probably just say, do you know what, it's a popular song, lots of people have it for their first dances, it's fine, your Aunt Gwen can, can keep the DVD, it's not a problem. However, let's take that analogy a step further. Let's say your wedding video proves so successful, your Aunt Gwen passes it around all her friends and relatives and they all say that you, you should set up a wedding videography business. So you upgrade from your little dad cam to a DSLR and some professional lighting and some microphones and you start shooting weddings for a living. You're charging maybe two grand a pop and because everyone loves Adele's version of Make You Feel My Love for their wedding video, that's your go-to song and you are absolutely smashing it. You're getting in six or eight weddings a month and you're now making a decent living out of shooting wedding videos. Now at this point, someone could argue that Adele deserves a little slice of your money. You are making money to some degree out of using her song. So she deserves some sort of compensation for that. That's a little bit like what music licensing is. You're placing a song over a visual medium. The creator of that song deserves some sort of slice of that monetary pie. So how does it work? Well, 
film creators, editors, directors will often have a musical vision for the kind of song they want to have over a scene. So let's say uh, Taylor Swift, that, uh, that that popular song she had, it's, uh, it's had a few streams, Shake It, something or other. Shake It Off. So a film director wants to use Taylor Swift's Shake It Off in their film or TV show. Now that song needs to be both cleared, i.e. permission is granted, and licensed, i.e. bought, both in time for production and within budget. So movies often have a deadline for when all shooting and all editing needs to be complete and the movie is going to be aired. It may well be that the production company can afford to use Taylor Swift's Shake It Off but they can't get the license in time or the other way around. Perhaps they can acquire the license in time, it can be cleared in time, but they can't afford it. And trust me, it would be a very expensive license for a song that big. So typically a music supervisor who may work for the TV show production company or may work at an external agency and has been hired to do the job, that music supervisor will attempt to source the song or the right kind of song to sit over a scene. Now if the music supervisor can't get hold of that big song, they can't clear or they don't have the budget for Taylor Swift's Shake It Off, then the music supervisor will look at independent musicians as cheaper alternatives. Now this creates an excellent opportunity for independent musicians and producers alike. If you can create music that sounds similar to popular trends, not even perhaps popular music, but specific genres that get used a lot in TV shows, then music licensing could be a good fit for you. Listen out, next time you're watching The Kardashians, Designated Survivor, the news, whatever it is that happens to be on, and try and pick out what kind of music's being played. Is it orchestral? Is it kind of folky, acoustic? Is it hard rock? Is it an instrumental track? Or is it a fully produced vocal track? If you think you can replicate that kind of music, maybe you already are, maybe, you're, maybe you write songs in a particular genre and you think, my music could be used on TV shows. Or maybe you don't write that kind of music, but you could. You know you've got the ability to replicate the kind of music that's being used a lot in TV. Well, then it's worth considering sync licensing. Now, there are different types of sync licensing for different composers, almost different lanes that as a composer or songwriter or producer, you might fit into. I think we'll talk about that in another video, in a follow-up video, because there's a lot more to talk about. But for now, let's keep things simple. How do you go about getting your music onto a TV show. Now, in theory, you could approach music supervisors directly. Now, that may sound difficult, but we live in this wonderful modern age of the internet, Google searches, Instagram, LinkedIn, where it's not that difficult to find somebody's email address. But bear in mind that because email addresses are that accessible, these guys and gals will be getting thousands of pitch emails every day. Now they may click on your song, they may give it a listen, and it may be a perfect fit, and they may reach out to you, and this may change your life, and you'll be earning thousands and thousands of pounds from music licensing from one simple email, but the likelihood is they're not gonna listen to it. And don't take it personally, they do not have time. So what music supervisors normally do is they will work with music licensing agencies and music libraries to find their music. Think of a music licensing agency and a music library as the middleman almost in the way that recruitment industry works. There's an employer who wants a candidate, there's a candidate who wants a job, a recruitment consultant will match those two together. Music licensing agency or music library kind of works in the same way. You will be far better off going through a music licensing agency or a music library to get your music into film and TV shows. Now, typically you can expect a 50-50 split on revenue. That may sound a bit drastic, 50-50. So an agency will get 50% of your licensing fee, even though they didn't technically create any music. But you have to consider the odds here of you landing a song in a big TV show without their help and how much potential income can be generated 
with their help. Like it or loathe it, it is industry standard. You won't be able to negotiate better terms. How those payments typically work in music licensing, you'll receive an upfront fee payment for your work. Now that, depending on the scale of the opportunity, can be astronomical or tiny. If it's a major Christmas advert, you could expect 100, 200,000. If it's a small cable TV show, you might get five quid. But it's the back-end royalties where the fun really starts. So to earn back-end royalties, you need to be registered with a PRO, stands for Performing Rights Organization. So if you live in the UK like me, it's PRS for Music, or the Performing Rights Society. PRS for music. If you're in the US, it's ASCAP or BMI. Make sure you register with a PRO. You can start earning back-end royalties. Now, as I said, this is where the fun really starts because even if the upfront sync fee is very small, if you get a song placed in, think of any reality TV show, every time you put on Virgin TV, Sky TV, a cable network, and you flick through the channels, those TV shows like the Kardashians, like Dog the Bounty Hunter, are being played on repeat anywhere in the world, constantly over and over. Every time it's played, that generates a royalty. So when my royalty statements come through every three months, I'm still earning money from songs that were placed four or five years ago. And that will continue to happen. So although quite small up front, and even the back end royalties first time they roll around might not look that impressive, over time they will build up and start to generate a fairly decent income. So there we go. I hope this whistle stop tour of music licensing has answered the question of what music licensing is. I am planning to do more on sync licensing. So please do stick around for future videos if that's something you're into. If you do want to see more on sync licensing, songwriting and all things music creation, then please do consider subscribing. And with that, my friends, I'll see you in the next video.